The way that I tend to look at language is that it is really a complex dynamic system. And usually that means that you don't understand what's going on. To make that a bit more tractable, we can start working with actual models that embed basic principle assumptions about how that complex dynamic system might work. So it's like a puzzle. When pieces start to fall together, that's, that's one of the great moments. When a theory that you've been thinking of starts making the right predictions, that's a great moment. But then, you know, uh, the, the fun of statistics, uh, and the way I like to do statistics, is to really explore the full structure of the data, to, to get the best possible picture of, of what's actually happening there. And then you learn so much. Rolf Harald Bayern is one of the most innovative researchers in computer-assisted and empirical linguistic research. He has made a fundamental contribution to our understanding of human speech and language processing. Bayern previously taught at the University of Alberta in Edmonton. Since October 2011, he has been working at the University of Tübingen, where he holds the chair in quantitative linguistics. Bayern has already gathered together a small circle of experts at Tübingen, colleagues from the US and Canada. Thanks to the award money that comes with the Alexander von Humboldt professorship, he has been able to recruit top international researchers. One very important thing for me is working with other people, like now with Michael and Peter and, and, and June and starting up a new group, my students over there. You know, if you're working together, you can share your knowledge and expertise and uh, for me, that is one of the, also a very big motivating factor. One of the first promising projects is to investigate age-related language competence. It focuses on a mathematical model used in the psychology of learning, which simulates language comprehension. Does cognitive performance really decline with age, as is so often claimed? The linguists contradict this theory. Our model is not suffering from any cognitive decline at all. It, it has, it's the same model for the old and the young. The only thing is that the old people have more experience. They know more words. You have such a rich knowledge when you're old that you have to pay a bit of a price and that it takes longer to retrieve, this, retrieve words and names from memory. But how does our brain manage to piece together meaning out of sound waves and written characters in the first place? A pocket calculator has clearly defined figures and rules on which to base its calculations. 2 plus 3 equals 5. Bayan doubts whether language processing works like this. Take the example of the words book and shop. We don't have to read and understand them individually before we can comprehend the compound word bookshop. Language is processed faster. While we're still reading book, our eyes have already progressed to the complete word bookshop and understood its meaning. That's why Bayern's computer model comes up with another path. You can think of it as a classification problem in which there are lots of bits of information. You know about the letters and you know what letter combinations and you have learned how good these cues are for the meaning of a word. The cues for us right now, very simple, we, which letters are there and what the letter combinations are. So the word walker would have W-A-A-L-L-K-K-E-E-R that give you a little bit of partial information about the order of the letters in the word. We use that as cues to map on the meanings. So for a thing like walker, it would be walk and that there's an agent doing the walker. Bayan's model makes correct predictions, for example, that we're quicker to understand words that are used frequently. But what's the use of theory without empirical data? 
Sensors fixed to lips, cheeks and tongue register the movements of our vocal muscle on an articular graph. Bayan wants to amalgamate these data with concurrent measurements of brain activity during speech. The idea is to discover the connections between speaking, listening and thinking, an ideal addition to linguistics at the University of Tübingen. For many years, our approach to linguistics was embedded in traditional philology. Having Rolf Harald Bayern here means we can now focus on an agenda we have been working on over the last few years, looking to take in the cognitive sciences and neurosciences. And with Bayern, I think we're guaranteed to succeed because he is a proponent of the empirical methods that lead in precisely this direction. Bayern uses various approaches for his research. The linguist also focuses on neologisms and dialects. Why can we make more words out of some roots than others? And what about the spread and preservation of dialects? Issues he has studied extensively at home in Holland. But there is plenty to be done in Swabia, the area around Tübingen, too. The Swabian dialect varies from region to region. It's very different. Yes, indeed, very different. If you go over towards Böblingen, can't the people from the east and west understand each other? Yes, they can understand each other, but they use different expressions. The only one I know about is a bissler. A bissler, yes, what's a bit? Tell me what a bit. A bit, a bissler. Yes, what is that? A bissler? I've still got a bit wine in my glass. <laughs> I think the, the ultimate goal is to get a kind of unified understanding of how the language system works. But whether that dream will be realized, I don't know. But it's a good dream to have. <laughs> Harald Bayern is a virtuoso in the world of linguistic research. His fundamental studies may well help us gain such a good understanding of the tool of language that we'll be able to learn languages faster and more efficiently.